Well, welcome, Mix family. God bless you. We're getting into our time of uh, just going before God in His Word today, and I am excited. We are in week four of our series, Reboot, and I believe God has been speaking to our hearts and our minds about what it is to reboot our lives for this walk that we have with Him. Uh, we're not going into this new year with the same mindset, but we have made a determination uh, that I will not live the same way I did last year, this year. I will live a better life. I will not just exist, but I will live. I will not just be comfortable, but I will be successful. I will see a change happen in my life today. And we're declaring that as we have come to the end of our 21 days of prayer and fasting. Uh, can I tell you, it's been amazing. How many of you have enjoyed it? How many of you have uh, just benefited from what God has been doing? Anybody in here has just benefited from what God has been doing over the last 21 days? And I'm so grateful. We ended on yesterday in prayer, and, and I believe the Lord has spoken to us. Uh, uh, he used my wife, Tamisha, to speak a word and a vision over the house, and I'm just grateful to God that he is speaking to his people yet and still uh, we're excited because today we have baptisms. We have people, yeah, come on, celebrate. We got people that are making a declaration of their commitment to God. And last but not least, we've got, uh, uh, no, actually, last but not least, we also have our mixed group leader training. Can I tell you that we have people that have been joining the church all throughout the year. And we have people that have come in and have been a part of groups and are making the decision, I want to be a part of people getting freedom. I want to be a part of people being discipled. I want to be a part of lives being changed. And so we have new group leader training happening today at one o'clock. And those that are a part of our groups already, they're at 2.30. And then we have a worship night tonight at 5.30. And we are like we are this morning expecting a move from God. If I can tell you, we're believing God to do something great and supernatural. We have seen healing literally on our stage at worship nights. We've seen God transform lives. We've seen God just break free the yoke of bondage that has been upon people's lives. And so I am here today to let you know you need to come back, tune back in wherever you're tuning into now. We will be broadcasting their live worship night tonight. So you want to be an expectation of what God is going to do. Now, if you can turn in your Bibles to Luke chapter five, Luke chapter five, we're going to speak God's word today. I pray that your hearts and minds are open and ready to what God wants to say. I believe that this specific moment is for you. I believe that God wants to share something great in your heart and he wants to speak something to what you've been praying about. And I believe these are the moments to capture what God is saying to his church. Luke chapter 5, starting at verse 12, and it speaks about Jesus. And it says, while he was in one of the cities, there came a man full of leprosy, a sickness, a disease. And it said, and when he saw Jesus, he fell on his face and begged him, Lord, if you will, you can make me clean. You should underline that. Lord, if you will, you can make me clean. And in the next verse, it says, and Jesus stretched out his hand and touched him saying, I will today. God is speaking that to some of you today. You've been praying over the last 21 days. You've been praying more than the last 21 days. And you're saying, God, uh, are you willing? And the Lord is saying, I will, I will be clean. And immediately the leprosy left him. He says, I will. He tells him, be clean. And immediately, can I tell you today, don't, don't look for God to do it in two to three weeks. Don't look for God to do it in two to three hours. Can somebody say, Lord, do it now. Lord, do it now. What I've been praying about, what I've been asking about, what I've been declaring, Lord, do it now. And it says, and he charged him to tell no one. But I remember back in the day when they used to tell us, 
It, it would be testimony service, and they would say, when I think about the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for me, my soul cries out. I, I think that's what the leopard felt this time. Jesus tried to help him contain it. Listen, it, it's not the time for you to tell anybody, but he says, but go and show yourself to the priest and make an offering for your cleansing as Moses commanded for a proof to them. But when he got his healing and he went into town and he started to talk about it. He, he couldn't help himself. And it says, but now even more, the report about him went abroad and great crowds gathered to hear him to be healed of their infirmities. There's something about when God does something for you, you can't help but tell somebody else. You can't help but share it. You can't help but allow someone else to know that what God has done for me, he can do it for you today. If I would have a title, and then I do, uh, today's message is called, What's Your Issue? What's Your Issue? Can we pray today? Father, we thank you so much in this place for the power of your presence. I pray that in this moment that we would have an opportunity to allow truth to set us free. I pray that I would speak only the words you would have for me to speak. And I pray that every ear that is open and ready to receive would be able to receive from you today. But Father, we love you. We honor and we thank you for this day. In Jesus' name, we say amen. Amen. God bless you all. I, I, I say today that it's, it's something to talk about this story during this season of COVID and understanding how... Uh, there is some similarities in the context in which we're talking about today. And I'll never forget being at the beginning stages when COVID uh, came that uh, I, I still was in a place where I, I wanted to be out. We wanted to get fresh air. It was still the springtime. And so I, I'll never forget going jogging. And I was going jogging around Patterson Park here. And, and, and let, me, let me rephrase that. It wasn't jogging. It was it was a quick walk. I don't want to. I don't want to give a, a sense of things that aren't true. So I just call it. It was a. It, it was a. It was a quick walk, Chris. You understand what I'm saying? It was. My feet were moving fast. I doubt that I uh, would validate that as jogging. Uh, but as I was moving around and 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 going through a uh, Patterson Park, I noticed because this had been my first time kind of jogging since the season had started. That 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 when you got to a person. There was this way in which they, 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 they went on the outskirts when you jog. I don't know if anybody's been walking lately or exercising, but when you would run, I, I, I started seeing people that would kind of move to the left. Now, normally you try to get out of a person's way as you're walking, you know, to and fro and, 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 and you're in the motion of, uh, of traffic. You're trying to be careful, but I noticed that there there began to be a new setup, and nobody told me about the setup. And, and the setup was this. It was that when you jog, when you see someone coming near, both of you are to run to the outer skirts of whatever the path is, and once you pass each other, then you are to come back together. Now, since no one told me about this, the, the first three to four times, I became a little bit offended, if I can just be honest with you. When I started running and people started almost going to the other side of the street, I started to feel a certain way. I wanted to let them know, hey, you don't have to treat me like that, all right? I, I, I don't have uh, COVID, at least I don't think, and you don't know if I do or don't, so don't walk to the other side of the street like there's something wrong with me because no one ever wants to feel like they are being looked at as somebody that, that, that has something wrong with them. None of us like the look or, or the feeling of being avoided because of a set of circumstances. And, and that's what I felt like. I got a little bit in my feelings. Can I tell you all that just to be real? But I could only imagine that this was the case for the leper, for the individual who felt alienated. For the individual who saw life in a different set of circumstances, when, when you were a leper, there were 
certain things that you had to now do differently that you don't currently have to do when you're not placed with a condition. Uh, uh, of, oftentimes, a leopard would feel alienated by their family or by their friends, or they couldn't be in the same common place as other people. They, they had to be treated differently. Does anybody really like being treated differently? I don't think any of us do. I, if, if I could be honest about it, none of us like being treated differently, and, and, and none of us like people looking at us because we are different. Being alienated, ha having a, a health condition, because it oftentimes said leprosy could disfigure a person. And leprosy would leave sores and, and it would leave open wounds and, 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 and poor eyesight. And so you can only imagine that this, this man who came to Jesus, he he's probably has scared the people that are around him. And, and, and those in whom Jesus has with him are, are, are automatically know what to do when a person comes. And, 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 and they jump away and they, and they speak out against it. And they talk about the condition and they see it at a head. Because here's the thing. There's nothing like wearing your condition on the outside when some of us understand we really have conditions, but we're hiding them on the inside. <laughs> it's real easy to, 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 to look at someone and, and shame them and, and, and see someone and think that they're not good enough or they're not worthy enough because of what you see on the outside. The leopard had the, 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 the responsibility of letting people know that they were coming near. I was doing research and it says they had to oftentimes carry noisemakers to let people know that they were near. Can you imagine that your affliction or your sin or your brokenness, you had to announce everywhere that you came in? Could you imagine having to come into church and yell out your, your mess before you could get up in here? Some of us would be like, listen, I can't make it this week. Because the way my week was looking, if I need to yell out what I did, I would be embarrassed. <laughs> I wouldn't tell you. I would lie. I would, I would make it up. But can you imagine that? It's not even about you having to tell somebody. They just know how you look. They can hear you coming. They take precautions. They move out the way. They go into their homes. They, they, they take an observation. They frown their faces. They scream and they yell because of your condition. Because of your brokenness. And the Bible says that's what this man had to do you. You, you can imagine he has no wife and no children to be able if he even had them to come near him because of his condition. Mm. I tend to think about how many of us carry a condition in our life that keeps us from living out the plan that God has called for us to live. How many of us carry a condition that keeps us from being the father that we're supposed to be? How many of us carry a condition that keeps us from being the honest husband we're supposed to be? How many of us carry a condition that keeps us from being the wife and keeps us from being the woman that we're supposed to be because there's something happening on the inside of us that's preventing us from being who God has truly called us to be? What's your issue? What's your issue today? What's your issue that's keeping the people from around you from seeing the light that's supposed to be in your life? What's your condition today? I, I, I even read that you have to be about 16 feet away from a leopard. Can you imagine spending a lonely time distant from people? We now find it hard just to stay six feet from folk. You walk in and you see the people you know and you just disregard it. Ah, come on. Give me a hug. I got a mask. Give me a pal. But could you imagine never being able to connect with another human again because of your condition? 
What if your condition was worn on the outside? What if people, when they walked up to you, saw what your mess was and they made the decision, no, I don't think I want to speak to you today. What if you were wearing your condition on the front of your shirt and people started to make the decision and, and, and make the thought process if they wanted to connect with you or if they didn't because I, I don't like people who do those kind of things. But oftentimes because our condition is hidden, we don't have to worry about people judging us. It even got to such the place that here's the thing. When you had leprosy, you could only hang out with people who had leprosy. You, you ever think about that? <laughs> you ever think about why you feel like you can never get out of where you are? Because you're hanging with people that have the same issue as you? See, here's the problem. If I have leprosy and I hang around people who have leprosy, we never get rid of leprosy. Because my touch is your touch, but because I'm in the same mess that you're in, I do nothing but pass off what I have to you and you do nothing but pass off what you have to me and healing can't take place. <laughs> because we got leprosy. And that's oftentimes what the enemy has put us in bondage with is that we find ourselves at places where we're trying to get freedom with the same folks suffering with the same issues we have. And we're trying to heal one another, but we don't have a cure to heal ourselves. <laughs> oh, man. The depressed are hanging with the depressed. The angry are hanging with the angry. The hopeless are hanging with the hopeless. And we're expecting healing. But the Bible says there was this leper that heard Jesus was near. There's nothing like hearing that Jesus is near. I want to say to somebody today, you've been hearing that Jesus is near, but you have failed to go to where he is. You failed to move closer. You failed to walk closer in his steps. You failed and, and you're trying to have your issues healed, but you're trying to stay at a distance from Jesus. And I'm here today to let you know that Jesus is, is not afraid of your issues. He's not afraid of your mess. He's not afraid of the stuff that you got hidden in the junk closet because what we love to do is we love to holiday clean our lives. We love to make it look good just enough to pass people's view. All the while in the closet, everything is shoved in because truthfully, we didn't take the time to clean the mess up. And so we have this tendency when we're gifted or when we come into church, that church provides a closet for us to shove our issues in so that people think that we're perfect and fine. But the problem is, is we don't receive freedom. So while we look at church online on Sundays, we don't get to group so that we can find freedom. And so we keep shoving our issues in the closet. We keep shoving our issues away so that no one sees it. We keep shoving our issues to the side, letting everybody know, no, I'm okay, I'm good, I'm doing well. And what we try to do is you ever had your grandparents that had the china closet? Y'all know about that where it was the fancy stuff that was out there. They tried to bring it out to make everything look good. But here's the problem. When you bring it out knowing that the rest of your stuff is messy, all you're doing is putting on a facade. 
and you're trying to impress people for the moment. But God is saying today, I'm coming and I'm here so that I can heal all of your issues. The issues that you let everybody know about that you're comfortable with saying, and then the issues that you shoved in the closet hoping that no one would see. It's time for you to find freedom in Jesus Christ today. And here's what I want to let you know. Like leprosy, there is no vaccine. There is no cure. There is no covering up that will ever heal the mess that you're in. The only way you can truly receive healing is through the power of Jesus Christ. You need Jesus on your stuff. Now we're talking about two doses of the vaccine that will help with COVID. You need an everyday dose of Jesus. An hour by hour, a minute by minute. If you're like me and you got some real issues, you need a minute by minute. If you really want to talk about me, you need a second by second if you really want to get into my life. Why? Because I understand something very clearly. I need Jesus day and night. I need Jesus in the morning. I need Jesus in the afternoon. I need Jesus late at night. I need Jesus on a Monday, a Tuesday, a Thursday, a Wednesday, a Friday. It doesn't matter what day it is I need Jesus so I need more than a dose of him on Sunday to try to hold me seven days until the next one I need God to do something with my issues and I believe today that God is saying I want to do something with your stuff I want to do something with your mess Jesus said I'm willing I'm willing can I tell you that God is saying whatever issue that you have, he's willing to do something about it. He's willing to do something about it. Lord, if you would clear this issue up, uh, uh, I, I could just be something greater. God is saying, I'm willing. I'm willing to make you the father that you're supposed to be, even though you've been absent. I'm willing to make you the husband that you're supposed to. I'm willing to make you the man that you're supposed to be. I'm willing to bring you out of depression if you're willing. I'm willing to bring you out of that sense of addiction of drugs or pornography or things that you shouldn't be doing. I'm willing to bring you out and make you clean and whole today. Here's the problem. We don't want to talk about our issues. We only want to talk about the stuff that people catch, not the stuff that we hide. Today, I believe that God is calling for us to call out our issues. I would, I would be so bold right now as to, as to tell you, right in your notes section, just start writing out what your issues are. Start facing your issues now so that God can start cleansing today. The longer you hold out from recognizing your issue is the longer you stay in your mess. You cannot get yourself out. You've tried. You don't have the power to redeem yourself. You've tried. So today is an opportunity for God to be able to do more than you could imagine or think in your life. So I am excited for you. Why? Because it's time to confront your issues. It's time to not sweep them under the rug. It's time to, to not put them on the side because you, you're scared of how people think about you. It don't matter how people think about you because most of the people that you're hanging with usually are just like you. What's your issue today? Will you be honest with it? Will you, will you, camera right here, will you not be churchy? <laughs> will, will, will you not be the, the, the religious one that comes in and, 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 and gets all done up and, and looks all together so that you, uh, you don't look like you need any help? How about sometimes when, when somebody says how you're doing and you look like you don't know what you're even doing, you can just say, I need some help today. 
I'm lost. I'm disheveled. I, I look crazy today. Why, why your hair not done? Because I'm stressed out. I need you to see I'm stressed out. Because normally what I do when I come to church, I put on such a good makeup facade. I, I put on all the right clothes that you would never suspect that I've got an issue going on. But today, I'm just coming out raw. I ain't got nothing. I ain't wearing no good clothes. I ain't do my hair. My nails look a hot mess. Why? I need you to see I've got an issue and I'm willing to expose it on the outside. I'm willing to expose it enough so that Jesus can do something about it. How about we just start telling people, I'm, I'm jacked up today. <laughs> can you pray for me? I need some help today. Can, can, are you willing? Are you willing to be a part of my circle that brings about my healing? Are you willing to be a part of the crew of people who aren't just concerned about my bank account, but you're concerned about my soul? Are you willing to be a part of the people that will see me not just be happy, but see me be healthy? Woo. Will you stop stroking my ego and start feeding my soul? Some of us need to understand we'll never get rid of leprosy hanging with lepers. We'll never get to the place that we want to be trying to fit in with the world. You've been called to stand out. God has called for us to be able to say what our issues are today. And that's what I want for you. I want for you to just be able to speak about your issue. And I don't want you to speak about your issue in pride. Yeah, because you know, because I hurt somebody. You know what I'm saying? We, we, we like to speak about our issues like they're strengths. Because I will cuss somebody out. No, no, no. That's an issue. Stop wearing that as a badge. It's an issue. You got to figure that out. I will turn this thing out. You have an issue. And that's the truth of the matter. We got some issues, y'all. And we need God to come in and cleanse it. We need God to come in and renew it. We need God to come and save our souls because we've been living in our mess so long that we can't even identify it as an issue anymore. It's just a characteristic. Oh, no, 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 that's just who I am. Oh, no, 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 that's called isolation. You know, I don't deal with people. Well, you, you were created on the earth with a billion others. So let's get you out of that. Because there's no possible way that you are created for people. <laughs> Trying to tell you, Pastor, I'm not created for people. I used to say it too. I'm not created for people. Then I started to think like, well, why did he put me on the earth then? <laughs> Just something we're told, something we're conditioned to think about. And I started thinking, well, how do I get the healing that I need in my issues? How do I get ahead of where I should be in my issues. And the first point that I came up with is you must identify your issue. Identify your issue. Some of us, it's issues. It's a long S. Because some of us haven't been able to receive freedom and so it's become one issue on top of another issue. And now we have acquired issues. See, that's the process of what happens when you don't tackle an issue. An issue multiplies into issues. You must identify your issues. 
shoots. Jeremiah 30 and 17 says this, I will restore your health and I will heal your wounds, declares the Lord. I am here today to let you know that God wants to heal the wounds of your past. God wants to bring health to your situations and your life. God wants to bring healing to the broken areas of where you are. He wants to heal you today. And he is willing to bring health, health emotionally, health mentally, health spiritually, health physically. God wants to bring health to your life. You must declare it. You must proclaim it. You must understand it is for me. Someone type that in the comments. It is for me. A healthy life. It is for me today. We're still dealing with traumas of our past issues that we cannot get over. And here's today what I want to let you know is that if you do not make a decision to release it to God, you will always deal with this issue, which will attract other issues. Point number two, you must bring it before God. I don't need you just to identify it. I need you to expose it. You need to bring your issue before God. Matthew eleven twenty eight 28 says this, Are you weary, carrying a heavy burden? Then come to me and I will refresh your life, for I am your oasis. I know during COVID, anybody can use a vacation. Come on now. Anybody want to go to the sandy beaches? Any, anybody just want to just want to take a moment? Could, you could praise God off of a off of a vacation right now. Like you could literally go into a worship or the Holy Spirit right now could enter into your heart on a vacation note right there. That's what he says. I will be your oasis, your vacation, your place of rest, not because Everything has changed around you, but because everything has changed in you. I will refresh you. I believe today God is refreshing us. Refreshing us with a new way of thinking, a new mindset, a renewing of our mind. He's refreshing our physical bodies. He's refreshing our emotions and our mental state. God is refreshing us I am praying most of all by the end of this day that God would refresh you with the Holy Spirit. And that's why we've made the decision standing right here on this podium to extend our 21 days of prayer and to call it 21 days plus. So what I want you to do, if you're willing, if you're able, and if you're ready for God to do something in your life, meet me again on Monday morning at 6.30 to 6.45 and watch God establish something new on the inside of you. We're going to create disciples here at The Mix. We're going to have a prayer life. We're going to seek after the heart of God and watch prayer be the very basis and foundation of what we stand upon as followers of Jesus Christ. Hmm. We're going to get you in a group because groups start in February. We're going to get you some accountability because you need some people in your life. I'm here today to let somebody know. I'm going to this camera, guys, this one right here, to let somebody know that you need to be doing life with someone that's further than you. Stop doing life with just the friends that are where you are. And find some people that can get you to where God is calling for you to be. We want to get you in a group so that you can find freedom. We want you to be a part of a church 
entering in growth track so that you can have a family to grow with. Today, we are calling that God is going to do great things, but you must bring it before him. Bring your issues because you cannot truly understand your design and purpose until you receive freedom from your broken past. And point number three, give thanks and offer worship. <laughs> the Bible lets us know in 1 Thessalonians 5 and 18, it says, no matter what happens, always be thankful. For this is God's will for you who belong to Christ Jesus. We're going to learn to give God thanks in everything. We're not waiting until he does it. We're praising him in advance for what he's already going to do. Lord, I'm still struggling with my issue, but I'm declaring freedom in the name of Jesus. I thank you for a free life. I thank you for the life that you've called me to. I thank you from releasing my past and embracing my future. God, I thank you that I'm being restored within, that I have a new mind in you. This year may have gotten off to a bumpy start. Last year may have been rough, but Lord, I am declaring today in the name of Jesus right now that you are refreshing me for who I am. I give you thanks. I offer you worship. I no longer resist, but I am giving you what is due unto your name. God, we thank you you today for what you are already doing in people's lives right now we will give thanks we'll give thanks when it doesn't go our way we'll give thanks when it goes our way we'll give thanks when we're in the middle waiting for it to go our way we'll give thanks in everything for this is the will of God we will give thanks and we will offer worship. We will give thanks, and we will offer worship. We will give thanks, and we will offer worship. We'll continue to roll that in my, because I can't be angry and depressed while I'm giving thanks and offering worship. I can't be focused on the wrong stuff when I'm giving thanks and offering worship. I can't be yelling at my spouse when I'm giving thanks and offering worship. I can't be hating my children when I'm giving thanks and offering worship. That's why he says do it over and over and over and over. God, I thank you because I can't be in the broken place I used to be when I'm thanking you and worshiping you for where you're taking me to. Before the leper man got to Jesus, he was only just existing. But when he had an encounter with Jesus, he started to live. Today, there are some of you who have been walking this life without Jesus. And I'm here today to let you know up until this point, I don't care how much money you have, I don't care how prosperous you feel, I don't care where you live at, you have been only existing. But when you take Jesus as your savior, you are making the decision to live. For the Bible says that he came for whoever would believe that you would not perish, but have eternal life in Jesus Christ. So today, I wanna let you know, cause I'm happy. Why am I happy? Because you're going from existing to living. And when you start living, you start feeling the rejuvenating understanding that God is with me and God is for me. And it doesn't matter if the whole world is against me. I am stable in his arms. So today, I want you to call it out and speak it out and stop being afraid of what people think and speak out what is your issue. Identify that thing, bring it to God, and then give him thanks and offer worship for all that he has done for you. And I promise you, you will see a joy and a peace like you will never understand 
not because things have changed around you, but that everything has changed inside of you. And today I'm believing God for that in your life. Can we just give God a hand clap praise today for the great things that he has done and for the life that we've been called to live. We are free in Jesus name today. And I just want to take this opportunity and pray for you that all of what has been said would not just be something that you hear, but it will be a place in which you move today. Father, in the name of Jesus, we're declaring this morning that what you are doing is not just a moment of passing in time, but it is an opportunity for us to live a life of freedom, for us to understand and, and to truly realize that you've called us to greater. So we are leaving our issues and if you are willing, will you cleanse us today? For we love you, and we honor you, and we thank you. In Jesus' name, we say amen. Amen. Well, listen, I am truly believing that there's somebody today that needs Jesus. And I'm believing that there's someone who heard this message that is having this moment in their heart where you just feel something. You don't know exactly what it is. But I'm here to inform you that it's the spirit of the living God that is pressing on your heart and that wants you to be a part of this magnificent family of Christ. So today, if that's you, you've never given your heart to Jesus or you gave your heart to God, but you've walked away and you've lived a life that ever since it's just been disappointment and regrets. I want to tell you today, you can have a fresh start. So if that's you, I want you to type in the comment section right now, go right ahead and write, I need Jesus. And I'm going to lead you in a prayer. And it's not the prayer that saves you, but it truly is your posture of heart to God today. Will you repeat after me? Say, Lord Jesus, I need you. Thank you for accepting me just as I am. Forgive me for my sins. I receive you as my Lord and Savior, and I commit to putting you first in my life. Take control of the throne of my life and make me who you want me to be. In Jesus' name, we say amen. Come on, y'all, help me celebrate those that made that decision today. Come on. It is a party and we are so excited and we're believing that God is changing you literally as we speak today. Welcome to the family of God. Now, listen, if that is you and you've made this uh, uh, a commitment to, to give your heart to God or to recommit your heart, we want to connect with you immediately. So text this word forgiven to the number 94000 and we have free resources that we are just ready and waiting to give to you today. We want you to be a part of that journey. We want you to be a part of a church. So connect and find out more about Growth Track. Find out more about being a part of a group. Find out of being, about being a part of what we call the kingdom family here at the Mixed Church. Well, love you. I'm so excited for what God is going to do in your life. And I look forward to seeing you tonight for worship night at 5.30. God bless you all, and we look forward to seeing you real soon. Wow, what an amazing message. It really hit home for me. Hey, look, we want to thank you again for watching. And while you're here, don't forget to subscribe to our channel and hit the notification bell so you don't miss a single video. Also, share this life-changing content with your friends, and your loved ones. If you took the courageous step at the end of the message to give your life to the Lord Jesus Christ for the first time, text the word forgiven to 94000. We'd love to send you some free resources and celebrate the wonderful decision you made. If you desire to connect with us and want to learn more, we encourage you to take our online growth track. It's a three-step process for you to learn about the mix, discover more about your purpose, and to join a mixed team. Register for Growth Track on our website at themixchurch.com. Now, in this moment, we encourage you to give, if you're able, by texting the word MIX 
to 7797. You can also partner with the ministry by going onto the Mix app and clicking the Give button at the bottom of the page or through Cash App. Finally, if you like us to pray with you, text the word pray, the number four, and the letter U to 94000, and we'll do just that. God bless you and have an amazing week. We'll see you next Sunday.